Hello, my name is Johannes Bauer. I'm an engineer at Nukem, and today I would like to show you around our mock-up facility. In the end of 2015, Nukem was awarded the contract to dismantle a reactor pressure vessel at a nuclear power plant. As works of a consortium partner had to be carried out prior to Nukem's task, we were provided with the opportunity of a very long planning phase. This also gave us the chance to try out all complex dismantling processes before the actual works on site on replicas of the components in a so-called mock-up. Nukem's scope for the dismantling works on the reactor pressure vessel in the following called RPV is the cylindrical part of the RPV, including the top and bottom flanges, the bottom dome section, the nozzles connected to the RPV, the pipes for the control rod drives and the insulation surrounding the RPV. The dismantling process itself is split up into two sub-procedures, which we call pre- and post-segmentation. This enables parallel work and therefore allows for a more efficient overall process. The term pre-segmentation is used to describe all dismantling works which take place while the components are still in their original assembly situation. Post-segmentation, as opposed to this, stands for all cutting processes, creating segments in a size suitable for the containers they will be stored in. These tasks are carried out in a separate caisson, where the big segments cut in the pre-segmentation will be transported to for further works. The main process in the pre-segmentation is performing circular cuts around the RPV, generating cylindrical segments in a height of approximately 2 meters. Depending on the segment which has to be cut in the current step, it can be necessary to remove the nozzles connected to the RPV as a preparatory work. This task is executed by a wire saw with a special guiding system. After this step, there are no contours left on the RPV which might interfere with the following circular cut. The circular cuts around the RPV are realized by autogenous flame cutting together with a dedicated guide system which carries out the 360 degree turn around the RPV. As this cutting technology generates a large amount of flue gases, the top opening of the RPV is closed by the contamination protection cover in the following called CPC which also has its own air filtration system. As a first step in this pre-segmentation process, the CPC is positioned on top of the RPV using the lifting traverse. Next, three rectangular holes are cut into the RPV in a distance of 120 degrees so that the lifting traverse can later grip onto these. After that, the lifting traverse is taken off the CPC, slightly turned and hooked into the rectangular holes. Hereby, the segment which has to be cut in the next step is securely mounted to the lifting traverse even before the cut. Afterwards, the 360 degree movement of the guide system with the flame cutter can be performed and the segment thereby taken off. This concludes the pre-segmentation and the ring-shaped segment is then transported to the post-segmentation space for further works. The cuts in the post-segmentation procedure are executed within a separate caisson by means of a robot, likewise guiding an autogenous flame cutter. The ring-shaped segment, which has to be cut, can be put into its optimal cutting position by the turning table it is placed on. The caisson has its own crane built-in, which also grips each segment before it is cut from the ring. Afterwards, the segment is put into the container provided in the sluice. When a container is fully loaded, it can be taken out, while the double door system prevents any contamination from leaving the caisson. Since any repairs on equipment during the actual dismantling works on site can be risky, if not impossible, all process steps first undergo a thorough examination in the mock-up facility. During this final rehearsal, the functionality is tested and the process is optimized. In a facility like this, without any radiation-related risks, this optimization can take place in a simplified way. The wire saw for the potentially necessary preparatory works in the pre-segmentation is tested with the engine placed on top of a platform on a scaffold. 
The guide system is suspended and clamped to a test specimen. With adjustment of the pulleys, the wire is driven through the test body. With the crane in the mock-up facility, the CPC is put on top of the RPV replica. The flaps it is equipped with are lowered once it has reached its final position in the RPV. This is done to achieve more distance to any interfering contours while the CPC is moving. Afterwards, it centers itself to the RPV and adjusts its horizontal alignment so that the following cut is completely level. The cuts of the post segmentation with the robot are also tested on the RPV replica. Like all remote controlled processes, the movements of the robot are operated from the control station. The crane gripper used for putting the cut segments into the containers is dried out with the full weight of the test body, otherwise used for the tests with the Autogenous Flame Cutter. A thorough check of the equipment at the mock-up facility guarantees that when the equipment is used for the actual on-site dismantling activities, it is already free from any initial flaws and the optimal process parameters are defined. This makes it possible to adhere to tight dismantling schedules by minimizing the risk of delays. If you would like to know more about our services, please visit nucamtechnologies.de.